the Putnam County Board of County Commissioners Transportation Workshop for Tuesday, November 23rd, 2021 to order. I want to welcome everybody here this morning or this afternoon. Um, we'll begin the meeting with the invocation by Commissioner Larry Harvey and I'll lead us in the pledge. Please stand. Let us bow. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, a day we've never experienced before in our life. Father, today as we make decisions, let them be profitable and good for Putnam County. Lord, as we debate today, let everything be done in order as you would have us to do. Father, we thank you for what we do. We thank you for the position you've called us to be at. And we ask grace and mercy and wisdom upon us as we deliberate. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah, that kind of ship sailed. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Commissioner we were Harvey. One second behind last week. That's all. Can I just wait for public comment to stay up? I mean, we need to go ahead and open it up. Okay, I'll open up uh, public comment. Any persons wishing to speak on agenda items? Um, this is the time where we can actually, if it's on the agenda, I feel we just would do it when the agenda item comes down, if that's okay. So they probably want to speak on the MSBUs. Is that correct? Okay, Mike, we'll go ahead and start um, on item A, Public Works MSBU discussion. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, yeah, we did want to bring this forward to, to discuss with the commissioners about the, the MSBU process that we have. Uh, you know, we, we just we just re rebid all the MSBUs uh, just this past year. Um, and currently their assessment is based on was it 15, 20 years ago when these things were, were started. And so what we wanted to look at is what would it be like if we did a sliding scale based on so many uh, so many services per year and grass cutting and some other stuff. So uh, if you look in your packet and it's really that next page and it's really small. So if you need glasses, I would I'd get them on. They're, they're small, but uh, it kind of goes through all the MSBUs and the very last column is the current assessment amount. That's what they get assessed on their on their tax bill every every uh, every year. And then they're just to the left of that is new assessment amount. That's with a uh, calculating in a 10, 10, 10 reserve, I believe, 15. or was it 15 percent? Yes, 15 percent reserve. Um, so that would be their. If we went this way, that would be their new um, assessment every year, based on the current cost that we got from this past process when we bid bid them out. Um, so I just wanted to give all the commissioners that information, if you can see it. Uh, it's, it is kind of small, but some of them went down, a lot of them went up, a couple of them went up by a lot. And it has to do more with where they're located at than the, the actual roads they're in. I mean, some of those have a smaller amount of, of, of miles of roads, but it's, it takes a lot of money to get the equipment from, one, from where it's located at to, to, to where these MSBs are located. So okay. Commissioner that Harvey? was one of the ones we want to discuss. Thank you, Ms. Truxell. Um, you know, commissioners, as this has been coming along for quite some time now, and what we've done, Nilda, correct me if I'm wrong, but almost 20 some odd years ago, these MSBUs were created. The first one was established in 1994, and the last one is in 2002. And none of the prices have reflected the current cost of doing business. So what these MSBUs have had to do is cut services and or forego work that needed to be done for example let's, let's pick on the elephant in the room okay um, they didn't have the money to mow if you will the right away and um, you invested money into the roads and now you've got trees in the right of way that need to come out of the right of way um, so i think now naturally let me say this there's a couple here that are astronomically high and we need to even have a conversation about those going forward. But I think, in my opinion, that we have got to get, we've got to get these MSBUs to what looks like the garbage or the waste, the solid waste fee. It's the cost of doing business in the county. 
And if somebody's going to pay a price from, from this commissioner's seat right here, and we've talked about it, it's got to be fair. And, and saying that we're not going to pay grade that road because no one lives on that road, I don't think that's fair. I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair to go, well, we're going to do every other month when we promise the people we do monthly. I think that we get a better quality if we stick to what we were trying to do. And because if I own property, say in West Putnam, uh, MSBU, and I lived up in New Jersey, and I wanted to come down and see my property, and I couldn't get to it, and we had that problem not in the MSBU district, but in, a, in another subdivision, that it cost us a lot more money to open that road up than it did just to, even if, even if we can set a standard of every other month or something and a mowing once a year. If you had a mowing once a year, you don't have eight inch trees in your right away. Right. You don't, I mean, you, mowing once every two, I don't care what the number is as much as I care that everybody's getting a level of service that's standardized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Commissioner Rawls. <clears throat> I think the solution is simple, and that is to have some sort of a, 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 a clause in the contracts that allows us to go up at whatever the cost of living is if we def, you know, set up a, a date certain in the middle of August, whatever we're going to use, and whatever the CPI is, um, base it on that, you, you have an automatic uh, way to, to get more money every year because the guy that's operating the equipment or, or the gal um, is buying fuel, buying tires, buying equipment, and as long as I've been alive, I can't remember deflation. <laughs> I just know about inflation. <clears throat> so it just seems mindless that you would have a contract in place for decades that would not have some kind of clause in it that would allow for the cost to increase because if not, then the only thing that can be done would be to decrease services and that's not what the citizens want. But I think at the same time, you have a citizens board, you have let them make the presentation, let, let them make the final um, decision and let them decide. This is, it's, it's their roads, it's their, their maintenance program. Um, but I don't know why, why we wouldn't have three to 5% built into it on, a, on an annual basis to cover things like, you know, and if this was a condominium association, they, they would have reserves and um, they, they would have it for replacement of something, maybe taking out trees that were in unforeseen right. condition or a road that gets washed out because a culvert gets backed up, something like that. But um, I, I just, we, we just went through this. We just, we just got, we got all new contracts. So I'm not sure where this leaves us. Maybe we can renegotiate those on the fly. I don't know. Well, for, for this is, the contracts are a two-year contract right. with two two-year options. So we're not looking to modify them. We're just going to let those run out? Sure. Okay. Mm. But, well, not necessarily, but it's, that's why we're having this discussion. We, we want to discuss, you know, how, how, how do we want to go forward with this? Because uh, I'm, I'm, with, I'm with you guys. We need, we need some type of standard of service out there, uh, whatever it is. And then we need that reserve built in so that when a storm comes up, we can, still, we can still do those things that we need to do. And it doesn't take away from their normal, either monthly or every other month maintenance that they need to do to those roads. Well, I think this is where each NSVU should come in and represent what they want, get it in writing, get it costed, have your escalation over year over year, and you know, let them bite off what they want to chew. Okay. Commissioner Harvey? Yeah, I think it goes a little deeper than that. Um, I, I don't know if I want to put an escalation on there because that's just going to, the contractor's going to know he can go up every year. Uh, but I do think, and Neil, to correct me if I'm wrong, what we're going to learn today, there's a couple of things we got to take care of, and we're going to take little bites of the apple as we go, so this isn't the only meeting, I'm sure, of MSBU conversation. Right. But what we decided, we need to change the MSBU from, give me the two words. Variable and non-variable. Variable and non-variable. So right now we have a non-variable. Non we're going to have a variable. We need to do that, number one. Number two is we got specific time dates set by the property appraiser's office Correct. to get, if we're gonna do this, to get these out for next year. We missed it this year, and, and that's fine. We're out the bed, we're rocking and rolling. Some of us are rocking and rolling on some of the MSBU, some of them aren't. So what's the first date, drop date certain, 
we have to actually hold public hearings for each individual one that we're going to increase and I would recommend by mid-March those take place. Okay. We have to have everything to the tax collector's office, property appraiser's office, no later than June for it to appear on the trim notices. Now when you say June, is that including the like the cost of doing business? Correct. Because here's my point. When we start looking at the first bite of the apple, we're going to look at price and we're going to look at reserves and some of these I don't, I don't know if all of them, but there's one I know that has a hefty reserve. Mm -hmm. So you might not see an increase if we set a reserve policy, you know, because they might, it might be kind of like the landfills making money, let's give some back to the citizens. Same scenario here. If they've got healthy reserves that they were unable to spend for 20 years, why would we go back and do anything with the cost? It, so it might be you're not going to pay anything for two years until you hit that that reserve limit. I don't know the answer there. So, Milda, as the MSP coordinator, you're saying in March we need to have that meeting to get it ready for the June property appraisal. Correct. <laughs> we need and to hold whatever public hearings we're going to hold for increase in any of these MSBUs by mid-March. And I to would go recommend. from non-variable to a variable MSBU. Correct. Okay, good. Thank you, Mr. Pick. Thank you, Mr. Pick. Okay. Oh, and uh, and Nilda, the the chain, the, the next couple pages are, are the, the ordinance that we have. Is that correct? The, yes. With with potential changes in there that we can, you can look through uh, to make that a <laughs> does that help make it a variable? Uh, sort no, of? This, no. This here is just cleaning up. I, I guess prior to me even coming into this position, the clerk's office processed everything, the application, the petitions, everything for the MSBU. So we needed to clean this up because they currently do not provide any service as it relates to implementation of any MSBUs. So this is just cleaning that up. This doesn't have anything to do with the actual assessments itself. Right. Okay. Mr. Pickett. Has Rich you looked at this? Okay. Mr. Harvey. Nilda, you and I have spoken and um, we have met with Rich and um, then I kind of went off and did other things. And I, so when I was reviewing this, I'm really not happy with some of the language. And on page six, um, and I appreciate your efforts. Do not think that that's, I mean, I, you've been handed a ball that you have to run with and you've never had an opportunity to have call time out or half time either. So I, I get that. But I think where I was going with when I started having the comments with the board about this was that before the county goes out and spends any money on creating an MSBU, um, I think it, it would behoove us as a commission to be supportive of that prior to that expenditure of money and time. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever we say Nilda or we want to create an MSBU and you're going, well, I'm a department of one and you are, yeah. you truly are. And I'm just going to hypothetically, I'll probably get this almost correct, that you probably maintain as many dirt roads as the county does as far as with contracts. Yep, we have 11 maintenance MSBUs that maintains approximately 266 miles. There you go. So, <laughs> so my point is, so on page six it says that the respective, with the respective county commissioner to discuss the proposed cost. I, I think we're getting, I think we need to take some time off on this one and it needs to, maybe the, the respective county commissioner needs to bring it to the board, okay. but before any expenditures take place, you gotta have a consensus of this board before we move forward. And because I, I would imagine Commissioner Pickens or Commissioner Rawls goes out there and go, yeah, I wanna start one, and, and all of a sudden 20,000 envelopes have to be sent out and you know getting responses and you're hiring staff, and the board goes, wait a minute, we never wanted to do that. And I think that's where, so I think there's some language that we've got to tighten to up a little that. bit before okay. we're ready for prime time. Okay. And, and I think that's repeated in a couple pages as okay. we go where it says respected. And then I want to go over to page seven, if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman, why I have a floor. Um, on page seven, it says, if at least 60% of the effective owners now, I have a question for our attorney before I ask this. Mr. Commander, 
and I probably should have asked you this prior to the meeting, and I apologize, but could you do some research if that's in statute that way? Because, no. That's a self-imposed rule. That's self-imposed rule. Now, that's 60% of, of them, of the owners them. responding. Then say 60% of the owner, the property owners, the way I know, because I had that down to ask that question too. Yeah. I think so if just 60% of the ones that responded and you had you know, another large percentage that didn't respond, where are they? Yeah, I, that's that makes sense. Yeah, that's where I was going with it. So those are tools that come to the commission for your consideration and whether or not to impose and pass the NSPU. You know, the question is whether it's sixty percent of the people that responded or sixty percent of the people that have property on the road. Well this says if at least sixty percent of the affected owners responding return the petition in favor of the project. So not if ten people have respond and there's a hundred homes and six say yes and four say no out of a hundred, it's a go? It d doesn't make it a go. It's a, that's a criteria you evaluate as a commission. That's Thanks the question. Though. <laughs> well, that's, that's the answer. You got it right, Jeff. Yeah, you're, you're right. I'm, because we, last time we had this, this conversation, the answer was no. It had to be 50% or greater than 50% of the property owners. So I, I don't have a problem with it. And again, if I may. That part's not even changing. It was the same as it was before. I know, but... We, we got an opinion from, block your ears, from other attorneys that had varying opinions. So it's. But I think, I think it's time for us, we're county commissioners, and it's time, I think we, we should hear from the public. Do not get me wrong. Don't ever want that to be thought that I don't believe in that. But at the end of the day, just be, when there's 20 people that live on the road, and there's another 20 that live in upstate New York or Pennsylvania, Buffalo. <laughs> whatever, and they just think that they own a piece of beautiful land in Florida, and I don't want to pay any more. It's not fair to me, and it's not fair to me, that these people that live there have to be subject to the people that don't live there. And, and I don't mean that rudely. I really, really don't. But again, Mr. Adamczak, in your district, Hoover Road would not have been done if the county commissioners didn't step up and go, we're going to get this done because the out-of-town landowners just didn't want, they didn't want any improvements because they don't drive on that road. And I think that's where I'm with Mr. Commando. At the end of the day, these are self-imposed. We need to have a caveat or by, board, by order of the Board of County Commissioners because I do want to hear from the citizens, but at the end of the day, they elected us to do the right thing, and yes, we will do the right thing. We'll, we'll debate it, we'll do the right thing, and we'll move forward here. And, you know, and I'm going to be honest with you, I don't get the calls that y'all get. I don't. If I, had to get, <laughs> if I had to get 200 miles of dirt road complaints, I, this would be a tough job. I'm feeling <laughs> in my district is tough enough, but without the, but thank God we had the MSBU. So, Rich, place. you're saying with this in there, then we couldn't override it because it's it's written this way. Or put a caveat on there. Because, well, he's going to know that at one point, bought the, the St. John's Harbor folks had the votes in favor. And we had a meeting out there, and that night we told them those are being thrown out. Well, if you will, will recall, um, that was due to the fact that there was a certain line item put in those letters stating if you don't respond that was considered a yes vote yeah, so yeah. we had to completely throw that out because we could not count those votes if, if I'm recalling the same mm -hmm. yeah that was okay yeah. percentage that you're referencing okay so we were told basically you can't do that you can't say well if you don't respond we're going to consider that a yes vote so we could But this says it in so many words as well it again, I'm sorry. This says that in so many words. You know, if you don't respond, then it's only it's, it's based only on the people that, that respond. <laughs> well, it says not as it should counted. be. Mm -hmm. Right. For or against mm -hmm. the project. Right. So. 
which has the same, same right but before yeah. i think she, you're saying that before a non-response was a positive exactly response. now so it's a neutral we response exactly it's a neutral response right. Right. it's just not considered right i'm sorry what was your question specifically so answer it no, I'm sorry. I think I, I was just trying to understand that you were saying if this is in there, this block of yellow under four, then that takes it, once it's approved by that 60%, then it's a go. It's a go. It's something you consider. It's okay. a public hearing before, then it leads to the public hearing before the board to consider the matter. It's not, that doesn't mean automatically it's a yes or automatically it's a okay, no. Okay, so through process, we still could say no or, or yes. Yes, sir. But it has to meet that even be, even to be considered. So, it would have to be sixty percent of the affected owners responding before we could even consider moving it forward. Sixty percent of the the returned responses. The responses, yes. Yes. In favor of. What you don't want is you don't want a group of two to five people bringing to this to you at every meeting. You'll never get anything else done. So the idea is you want to meet a certain threshold before it actually comes to right. your attention for a review. So are we, let me ask you this, are we happy with a 60% of affected owners responding? Or are we happy with 50%? I'm 50 plus one. 50 plus one? We're professor. Majority? Is that what you're saying? Majority. 50 plus one? <coughs> I'm fine with 50% plus one. And there are some places that do 60%, 66%, 75% based on the type of project that right. goes forward, so. Sure. <coughs> I'm all right with 50 plus one if that's what we're asking. I'm sorry? I'm all right with 50 plus one if that's what we're talking about. That's what I'm talking about. 50% plus one and that would be a MSBU grading <coughs> project or a paving project, doesn't matter? I don't think it's a variable. I don't think it matters, does it? It's just any project. Any, any project. Any MSB project. Any, okay. And that just that just brings it to your attention to hey, we're now we're gonna now you guys are gonna sit and discuss it. Hey, okay. you know, do we want to go that's forward? That's just to get it to us. Yeah, okay. Right. So at this point, though, may, may I? Yes. At this point, um, where are we at on county time when we get to when we get to page seven? Paragraph four, Nilda, where do you see yourself at that point? Is that where you're sending out letters at that point, or is that where the citizens have gotten together and brought us a petition form, a letter, a handwritten note on a napkin? This is where we actually have sent out letters. Okay. And that is the response tallied up by me okay. to give back to you an update on the proposed project. Okay, so, so we haven't went to a public hearing stage yet. We haven't generated any letters notifying them of a public hearing. This is all prior to that okay. in the process. So we've already blessed it. And now we've said go out and see what the response will be. And that's when time and money is being spent. That first letter is basically, yes. Okay. The first letter would have some type of cost associated with it time invested in printing those letters out and generating them out to the public, giving them a certain time frame to respond back, and then tallying it up. So that's Is that going to be a citizens-led initiative again, or is that in conjunction with the sitting commissioner at that district, or how does that, how do you see that happening? Currently it is written, it can be either or. Either or? Yes, sir. Okay. So it can be driven by a commissioner along with a petition, or just a petition by itself. Good. Commissioner Adlack? Yes, your, your first problem with it, Larry, I, or Commissioner Harvey, I'm, I'm not understanding is you want it before they send out, I mean, I, the, I don't see a situation where we send out 20,000 letters, but um, and maybe I'm naive. And Larkin Lake's estate, pay the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have um, that kind of money. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess I'm, I'm trying to understand that why we wouldn't want one commissioner. I mean, because like I, I had a group of, of people and one of mine that, that approached me and said, oh, when's the meetings? When? And I got them together with Nilda. We were at the meeting, only a couple of them showed up. And uh, you know, obviously I wouldn't bring that one forward. I mean, it, I think we have to have some faith in each other that we're not gonna bring something frivolous and stupid up. Um, 
because that would at this point in time with that particular one, it would be very dumb for me to present it and go, hey, two people showed up one time, never came back again. Let's do it. That, that's, that would be absurd on my part, and I, I would right. expect people to be angry. Um, I don't mind. So what I guess what I'm saying is I don't mind the way it's written because I think I, I have faith in the rest of you as well as myself that we're not going to just bring up every time someone makes a phone call to us, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I, uh, makes common sense to me. But, you know, when you look at one of the largest ones, ILE North, almost 7,000 units or 7,000 letters went out. Yeah. That's a big cost to staff. And do they have to be certified letters and all that? So, wow. yeah, you're talking serious money right there. $3,500. Yeah. Or 4000 maybe. Yeah, but in staff time. Right. I mean, they licked the envelopes around here for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Nilda doesn't want to do that. I would hope we had a printer or something. It'd be like Seinfeld. <laughs> Should we fell over dead? <laughs> well, I'm fine with it. If you're fine with it, we'll just keep, you Yeah, know. I'm fine. I don't know what the other commissioners feel, but I'm, I'm fine with it being that way because I just don't, I don't see any of us going, hey, let's do all the roads in Johnson. Right. Because three people asked me to or something. It just, that's... Okay, what do you need from us? Yes. I just want to have the discussion so that we can, if we, if we need to change some stuff, we will change it. Uh, and we'll, obviously we'll probably bring this back one more time before, uh, before we hit certain marks because we got to have some stuff done by, by April and May and June. And Jeff. So, uh, but I wanted to have the discussion today um, and it, it helps us on the way forward on what we need to do. Um, so to tighten this up slightly and then find out what we need to do to do the variable, non-variable, uh, MSB type stuff. Well, I think, may I say, may yes. I, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm with Commissioner Abzak. I think at first I wasn't, but I do have enough respect for everybody that sits up here that they wouldn't go out and like, you know, get two people and go, yeah, we're gonna form an MSBU. Um, That'd be fine. And I think we need to identify the non-variable, yeah. you know, um, and variable situation. I think maybe kind of a checkoff sheet on the on when we have one that would give us a breakdown of the timelines and things we have to meet at that point. And um, but I do think, Neil, the next time you come back, if and I'm not, this is just this commissioner. I think we need to have a standard, Mr. Troxel of what these roads look like. I mean, is it, is it every other month? Is it mowing once a year? Is it drainage? Is it, and what our reserves are gonna be set at? Right. Because I think those are very, do we follow the county's reserve policy? I think that might be an easy lift right there because we've already got kind of a, a reserve policy already set for general fund. So. Well, I think, I'm sorry to interrupt no, you, you're, but. Uh, you're fine. When we look at each MSBU, each MSBU is different. There's a lot of them that are going to be really similar, uh, but a 15% reserve for Acosta Creek is going to be different than a 15% reserve from a, a ILA South or right. something because the cost is so much greater. Uh, so maybe we, because the cost of grading a road after a storm is going to be more for Acosta Creek than the other one. So uh, I don't know. We have to look look th look through that, but. You know, as a general rule, 10 to 15 percent reserve, I think, would is well, suffice. I think we but should follow the county policy. So if we're going to set 10 percent, I wouldn't mind even having go up to 15. But I know there's one on here that is flush with money. Right. And maybe they couldn't spend the money. Maybe they didn't spend the money. Well, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I think they tried to do the best they can. They just got money and you know so maybe they don't have an assessment for a little while until they hit that but I, I feel I feel very strongly that government and churches shouldn't have large bank accounts we're in the business of of reducing not increasing <coughs> it's starting to sound like Adam's on it <laughs> okay. Commissioner Rawls all right so let's have this conversation um, if an MSBU, if a group of citizens decided they did want to pave their road, um, the county used to participate in that at 25 and 50 percent. 
um, why don't we take a look at while we're looking at all this of having something like that to where mm -hmm. we take our dirt to pave money and we d we basically by having a partnership with the public they we pay a portion they pay a portion and then it takes a lot of this off our back in the future and makes a lot happier citizens out of it. Personally, I'm, I'm, I think that's a great idea. Uh, I think we should partner more with some of these locals, uh, the MSBUs or anybody else that wants to, wants to partner with the county. Right. Okay. Commissioner Harvey? You know, I agree, Commissioner Rawls. I said that when we started the Better Place Plan, I really lobbied hard for the commissioners at that point for the money they bonded was to go out and start MSBUs and double their, double their money, basically, double the distance, if you will. Um, I think that that I think now that when I got here and some of the philosophy changed according to MSBU, ins instead of going, we're not going to pave a single MSB road unless we pave all of them. That's ludicrous. That's that's ridiculous. There's a lot of words I could use, um, but now that that thought's not there anymore. So we've turned a corner on that. And I think if you have a group like your group out here, or another group that's that been benefiting themselves and now they want to go to a pave I think it's only fair that we say you know 50 cents a dollar or whatever the case whatever that number is but the only problem I see and I do see a problem is how does it fit into our dirt to pave schedule is it gonna do we guarantee that in year three we're going to do this with this money or do we or do we set aside you know, a million a year to say, okay, you're next up. But I don't know that answer. You know, we're not going to, I don't, I don't want to go out and bond $50 million. I, I don't want to do that. So, you know. I remember uh, it was probably about a month ago, I was looking on different county websites for, uh, uh, for that exact thing. And there's, there is a, I can't, I think I got it on my computer at the, at the house is there is a county close to here that does that does that exact same thing. They, they partner, and I just to get the exact language. I have to print that out and bring it in. But, yeah, there, there are many counties that do that. Well, even if you do, but even if it's a million dollars at our current prices, we're probably not going to see more than three miles of road changing from dirt to pave. That's not a lot. I mean, you, you take, excuse me, let me, let me do all the West Putnam at 95 miles of dirt road. I don't see a whole lot, but but I can tell you one thing, and I appreciate the board's patience with me when I talk about it. But in front of my house, where we went from dirt to pave, we paid 100% of that road, and still paid the Better Place Plan sales tax. But you know what? The wear and tear on our car, it was a it was a given. We we saved money on wear and tear. We got a road, so you know. But I'm I want to help those who want to help themselves. Commissioner Adams, I was kind of I was going to ask how we felt that would look, and to me, I would think you would prioritize any project that that was going to fund a portion of it from the citizens directly. So you would, if you had a list, of, maybe you'd have a drop dead date for that year. You know, three months before we decided dirt to pave. Maybe if, if nothing's come in, then dirt to pave goes to what we assign it to. But if they use all of it for those type of projects, I have no problem with that because that's saving us money and facilitating getting the people that are most aggressively interested in doing it for themselves as well. Um, so I'd be on board with that, and whether it's 25 or 50%, you know, whatever is more enticing. So 50% makes sense to me, and um, I'd love to see us move that forward. I don't know how you write that, but. Yeah, I believe the, uh, the county that I looked at, it was a 50% match. Yeah, and I think I would, I would cancel my other dirt to paves and do them. Absolutely. Okay, Commissioner Rawls. So, then, so I think too with the, the game is the, 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 the landowner and having a hypothetical conversation. Let's just assume, and I think you'll probably be close, that if we double the cost of the MSBU right now, say in St. John's Harbor, I'm thinking, why the heck would you do that? <laughs> um, because I think that brings us into reality. Correct. All right, then you, 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 you take that cost away and you substitute it for 50% cost share and pay. What, is, what does that really look like? And, it wouldn't take it wouldn't take a long time to run those numbers and, and see and then if you take the, the little number and you divide it by the big number you get that percentage and then you get the homeowner and say look you know for 25 percent more you can be driving on a paved road mm -hmm. otherwise 
you're going to pay this much money and, and still be driving on, on, the, on the dirt road. So um, I, I, I agree with Commissioner Harvey. We, we, we need to set a, 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 minimum, <coughs> a minimum standard and then stick to it. Right. And I, I think part of the problem that the entire county has has had to endure is, and, and one of the phone calls that I'll, I'll just, I'll save this phone call right now and tell you, um, uh, the, the landscaping crew that we hired to maintain 160 Sunset Road when I came in the other day, they, they were bitches. They did a great job. Um, I didn't tell them it wasn't their responsibility, not part of their contract, they don't know, it doesn't matter. But they do now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but, but the truth is, is that um, the ditches have been full of organics for a long time. So this would help that along as well, because when you're paving roads, you're fixing your drainage issues at the same time. You know, I still think that we should take a look at having a countywide MSDB to drainage and take advantage of that and, and do it at the same time. But, um, you know, I, I agree with Commissioner Adams on that. Why, why not take a hard look? If we have somebody willing to participate at a 50 level with us, why don't we um, go at that angle? And then when somebody says, what does it take for me to get my road paved? We say, easy. Let's have a meeting with your, with your folks, send letters out, um, set up an MSDB, and we'll pay for half and you pay for half. Okay, Commissioner Harvey. We'll Thank wrap, wrap this up after that one. Okay. Commissioner Rose, you're right. And, and let me, I just kind of ran some numbers at 400,000 for 4.3 miles of roads in, in the MSVU, your new assessment with reserves would be $238. But 238? 238 per partial. Yeah. Um, but if, if that number is correct, 400,000 per mile times 4.3, and divide, th that would leave 1,600, well, that's $725,000. Divide that by the 449 affected partials. No, there's only... Yeah, 449. No, St. John's Harbor's got 449 units. So you would see a number of $1,612 or $14. And if you divide that over a 10 year period, now you're assessed $161. And what is, so it right, what is it right now for dirt? Right now for cost of grading, let's 30, see. 3496 $34.96. Yeah. And I would imagine it's probably going to be in the seventy-five to one hundred dollar range. Uh, well, it's, it's two hundred thirty something. Two hundred thirty. I thought you were saying to pay. No, uh, but it would be one sixty-one if you divide it by ten years to pay. Mm -hmm. So, right. so you're, you're talking. Uh, so then you're only selling one hundred thirty dollars more a year uh, for ten years to get to get a road paid. I don't know. What saves, what's, what is it saves us in, in the way of um, yeah. frustration? Correct. And and. The, and this is exactly what I wanted to have the discussion today. So it's been it's been good. I think it's a great. I'm discussion. Gonna one last thing okay. And I, and I think the one caveat to this is, it makes it more favorable for people to do it, right? So we don't have people as upset because if we have it in a advertised manner that everyone understands, and that they know if they participate, we're going to participate. You know, these guys aren't going to be mad at us. It. Yeah. I love it. Okay. We know you don't want your roads paved. You like things with No, uh, that's wrong. We <laughs> want our roads paved. Yeah. If you give we would your love name. to have them paved tomorrow. If you give your but name and address for the record, please, yeah. if you would. Uh, Bill Thompson, 123 Kingfish Avenue, Palaka, St. John's Harbor, Unit 3. I'm the uh, MSBU chairman for the Citizen Committee. And we did meet a couple of weeks ago, and we try to meet now, trying to meet every month. But the uh, consensus of the committee is that the cost of this contract, this new contract, is just absolutely not affordable. We're going to be out of money in less than six months if we do nothing but blade roads. That's not taking care of any drainage or anything else. So, yeah, something has to be done. Uh, yeah, we would like to see, uh, if in a perfect world, do away with the MSBU, come and pave our roads tomorrow. Uh, we're not naive enough to know that's going to happen. But uh, we need to have a goal to work toward that. I've been in this location for about 20 years, uh, you know, and I'm tired of eating dirt. Because no matter what you do to these roads, you're putting Band-Aids on sand, you know, and they're going to fall off. 
They're not going to stick. They're not permanent. So, you know, we need a plan to do something permanent out there. We have a lot of homeowners, but we could have a lot more if we had paved roads. Mm -hmm. You know, and, you know, we're just looking for a solution. Uh, if you want to increase our rates by $200 a year per parcel, I own five parcels. That's $1,000 for me. For $1,000 a year, I want paved. Okay. I mean, so, yeah, I just, uh, some of the, the cost of this contract, some of it, like just the blading <coughs> went from $270 a mile to $1,250 a mile. And we put some work orders in for, for this month and had to cancel them because we have two miles of the four miles of lime rock. Uh, made a deal back when that if we used MSB money to improve the roads, that the previous public works director would figure out a way to come in and put some buildings down or something. Well, that never happened. You know, uh, that was under Bob Burton, which goes back, you know, a long time ago. But, you know, the lime rock occasionally has to be scarified, you know, rebladed, reshaped, and compacted. And we had been doing that three or four times a year. Well, under the new contract, <coughs> that cost went to $1,250 a mile. If you do that four times a year for eight miles, that's $10,000. That's a big chunk of our budget. And that's just to do the scarifying. That's another $1,250 to come in and blade it. And then more money for the rover. So, you know, I mean, it's... There's no way under this current contract that we're affordable. So, I, I, can I? Yeah, yeah. Commissioner Harvey oh, first. Sorry. Let Commissioner Harvey go first, and then I'll get you, Jeff. Okay, Mr. Troxell, you heard Bill say that in six months under the current contract, they're going to be broke, and we know we know what's wrong with their contract. Well, we didn't, we know what's wrong with their location, not their contract. And we have the same issue down in Acosta Creek, too. <coughs> what do we do in this case? What do we do when we know that the new contract is going to set them up to be broke? Because does the county now abolish that MSBU and take it over? Or no. no what and do? Well, 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 we're going to make <coughs> them broke in six months. That is Not this we. The contract is going to make That them is this, from, from what I can take, that is this, because there's, the prices did not change this year, but the, the contract prices changed this year, but their assessment did not change this year. Right, exactly. So next year when their assessment changes, they will have a little bit more money to do this stuff. But this this gap year, as, as has been determined, is, is, is going to be a challenge for, for any MSBU out there. Uh, but it's just, it's this gap year between the two. from 20-something dollars a year assessment to if we go with the variable, we're going to see a $238 assessment. And I can tell you, I know what the problem, they're going to scream and they're not going to need, they're not. And the problem is there's no other MSBUs out there in that area that are economy to scale that they can do all at one time. That's why the bid price got so high. They have to haul equipment out. Absolutely. There. And it's, it's yeah. just, it's the cost of, of hauling equipment is if we do a project down in the, in, in the north, northeast corner of the, of the state and, or in the county and the, the the low bid was from Flacca. It's going to cost a lot of money to move the equipment up there. That's the mobilization cost, and it's and it's it's expensive. I know. All right, thank you, Commissioner Rawls. All right. <laughs> so, when was the last time you had an increase in your MSBU bill? No. There hasn't been an increase since I've been here. Correct. It and, wasn't and built into the contract. Right. Uh, but did did you ever wake up one morning and think? You know, cost of living has gone up over the past 10 years, 30 to 35 percent. But we're really blessed because of people keep well, paying the roads. You say that, and, and I understand that. Believe me, I do. I, I actually worked for Public Works at Nilda's job uh, back in early 2000s. So I understand more about this than, you know. Uh, what I'm saying is that what, 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 <clears throat> what I get frustrated with hearing is, the public's going to freak out if they have to pay an additional two hundred dollars per year. And what what I keep screaming is, but the public should have been paying a little bit more every year as we went along. And then we wouldn't have. We're making a major adjustment 
I understand because that. we went a long time but without making increase, any adjustments. The increase in the grading alone went up 600%. Uh, you know, 600% over 20 years. I don't years, doubt that, it, but if you look at the cost large. of equipment. What's that? Look at the cost of equipment. Just in the past 18 months. Don't even go back more than 18 months. Just go back 18 months and look what's happened to the cost of equipment, tires, um, labor. Fuel. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, it's, it's going to be a cyclical conversation. We're trying to come up with a solution. We have a viable solution. Um, you have five lots. You're, 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 the, you're the, the unique individual. But for the average person that just has one lot, you have the option of selling all four lots and keeping right. one and paying Sell one. Sell all five of them. Go right. to Clay County on a paved road. Right. So most people are going to say they just have one lot. They're going to have one share. But, you know, and, and this is going to happen. This is my frustration with MSBs. Every time somebody says, yeah, but I have a house in three vacant lots. Why should I have to pay more? I only live in one house. Well, you could sell a lot. You could build a house and sell a lot in a house. You could build two houses and, and sell two lots. The, the possibility is always there. I'm in the same predicament. I have land that I own that I don't live on, and I pay taxes on it every year. Um, will I develop it? Maybe, maybe not. But... It, it just the in, in the interest of fairness, we're trying to come up with a solution that would satisfy, to the extent that you can be satisfied, everybody. And you guys have indicated you want to be paved. We know that paving is going to cost more, but based on what Commissioner Harvey just just ran through, it's not going to be that much more to just go ahead and bite off that part of the apple, and you're paved. Your land value just went up, by the way. Yep. <clears throat> so we did we helped you out, um, and. You could walk in one day and write us a check and say, hey, I appreciate you doing that because my land value went up. Yeah. But Well, yeah. and the two miles of our roads have the lime rock based on it. So, you know, it, uh, we've been working toward that goal for a long time. You, you mean, so here's a question for you then. How good is that lime rock base now that it's been down and rained on and scarified and you know, it has to be proctored and tested. I would, I, I would not go on the assumption that what you have is usable. Is my point? No, we'd have, we'd have to test it. Uh, yeah. I mean, again, uh, depends on how. Uh, the last time they put it down, how thick did they put it down? Mm -hmm. uh, that, that type of thing. But yeah, you'd have to have it tested uh, to, to, to see, yeah. see what, what kind of load bearing capacity it has. Yeah, I'm just saying, I, it, it may be great, and you, that that could be a huge savings, but it could also have to be taken up. Yeah, yeah. I won't say our roads are great. Right. All right. I, I, if I if I was in your position, I would I would be talking to my neighbors about paving and taking the county up. If we can get to a point where we can afford that other fifty percent, I think. And then you know going forward, we're in, now we're incentivizing the taxpayers here to help themselves. We um, you know joining with them, and we'll end up with a lot more paved miles of road that way and a lot happier customers. Well, I know when we sent these letters out before. Uh, the response that we got back wasn't that percentage greater than the 50 percent but she said those were no good because they had that that language in there that so yes it was it, it was over 50 percent it was over 60 percent if i remember correctly um but they were thrown out okay commissioner adams that i don't think fairness has anything to do with it um there's people in this county that live on private roads there's people in this county that live on paved roads there's people that live on dirt roads you know what your road was when you bought it. I'm not talking specifically to you guys. I'm talking to everybody. I live on a private road. I would be blessed if I can only spend $1,000 a year to maintain the road from my house to the end with my neighbors. It's way more than $1,000 a year for our group of people that live on my road. And I know other people that live on private roads that they choose to do absolutely nothing, and they just go through deep holes, and they would love for us to help them out there too. And they, But they choose to because they can't afford it or they, they don't want to spend the money because it's not a priority to them. Um, for whatever reason, you know, my wife wins the battle and it's a priority to make our road as flat as possible. Um, but <clears throat> it's just, there, there's people spend a lot more than a thousand dollars, a lot less than five parcels on hundreds of miles of pr private roads in this county as well. If you're talking about fairness, what, what are we doing for them? We're not going to do anything for them. Okay. All right. So with this, we want to move this where y'all going to take this back and, and then bring it back to us one more time. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll take the suggestions we got and and we will uh, we'll tweak some stuff. Then we'll bring it back. To, uh, would, it, would it be a lot of effort for you to take things on Carver and just run another loop through and? Yeah, we can do that. Okay. 
administrator. So Can I, I say one more thing real quick? Yeah. I, I think that using theirs as the example, I think would be a, a good exercise. I think it's gonna show, just, I mean, Larry did the numbers real quick, but with real numbers, that it probably is gonna be cheaper for you guys to pave it once we go down the path. And it sounds like at least three of us think that that's a good idea. So that three out of five gets the vote. I mean, so <laughs> it sounds like at least three of us think it's a good idea to allow you guys to cost share with us on the MSBU. Right, right. So, so you're talking about using some BPP money to, to and, and pay at up some to 50 percent. Right, right. Exactly. I'm, I'm with you on that. Okay. Yeah, you go. Four. Four. Okay. Okay. Administrator side. <laughs> yes, sir. Just a couple things. I just for, this is for Neil's sake. A lot of conversations been been had here today. I want to make sure that Ms. Nilda is up to speed on what it is that uh, is being requested to be changed and redrafted and, and brought back to the board so we can try to move this thing forward. Is as uh, judicially as we can. I just want to make sure that we're, you got what you need, Ms. Nilda? Okay. And if, you're welcome. And if there's any um, movement forward on the discussion of, of doing exactly what you're talking about, doing the using dirt to pave dollars to offset these costs, we may need to look at some structured language and changes uh, to make that happen for the board as well. But we'll take that direction as that conversation moves forward. It, yeah, the, the BPP money as, not as, as, as we could find it, right? Yeah, we well, just can't. You might want to put a look at putting a certain amount of BBP for that. That's just you know, if you don't want an influx of a hundred different MSBUs, <laughs> hey, that's we correct. Because we won't do it now, and you won't have any, any money. Yeah, so let's be. Yeah, I just want to be cautious about it because we do have a set policy by the board on how much money we set aside every year for right. dirt to pave. So. If we're going to change that structure, we're going to need to come back and draft new policy to meet the board's new desire. But we can do that with the direction of the board once we figure out where it is that we want to fall with this. You know, we also have to be mindful of the other costs that are associated with BPP that we don't don't ex exceed the cost that we have coming in. Right. Okay, Commissioner Rawls. Um, off topic, but it's relevant. Um, with all the we talked about the Kroger being in town and, and selling groceries here. You know, they're they're local. They collect state tax. We get our our one percent off that. But with all the money that's that's being spent um, online, I just wonder if anybody's able to tell if we're getting a hundred percent of what we should be getting for the PPP. Or, or has anybody looked at that? I mean, we're losing money. Talking about online sales tax coming back to. County. And I, I think I asked that question and they couldn't delineate no. um, what was online versus what was spent. But we did see an uptick in our Better Place Plan revenue last year. And that may be. So we'll, we'll have to look at that and check and see if there's, is there a formula out there that will, will tell us the difference in, in either one of those projects or programs. Uh, you know, we, we could float a bond and, and put money out there. Mm -hmm. And it would save us. You know, one thing that flashed in my mind is, have as the county sat down to see what it would take for the county to maintain that road out, to maintain those roads out there on, if they were left as dirt. If the if the county was to go in the business of managing the uh, roads for the MSBUs, that would just be what our current. They would just fall in rotation with our other stuff. And but I'm saying, what 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 would the cost be? Oh, I don't know. We'd have to look at how many times we could grade them a year versus what they're doing now. Well, yeah, I don't think it'd be so the same there, there cost as what we're doing a road for now. It just would slow down the whole process and everybody would receive less service. Right. Yeah. We, unless we could expand and have seven graders and then all the other workers too. I think it would just slow the whole process down. Right. I think at the end of the day, um, getting off of dirt and getting on the pavement is, is going to be the way to go. And I, I, I really believe that as we start to develop and as developers start to come into the community, um, I, am, I am adamantly opposed to impact fees right now for several reasons, but I, I would like to see us start to look at CDD fees and especially when it comes to developments, any developer that comes to town, anything they put in, they've got to put in their roads, their drainage, um, their water and sewer and their sidewalks and, and we'll have a conversation with, with the land development code about that but I think that that should be the onus on the onus of the uh, the uh, developer and then they pass that along to their customers which become our customers eventually um, and we can help them out by helping them raise money but it comes back to us and then we don't have to worry about that but 
Yeah, I, I, I would um, I, I would definitely take a look at uh, St. John's Harbor is probably not the worst, but maybe one of the worst case scenarios. So if you ran those numbers and get that percentage, see what the what the increase would be. Okay. <clears throat> because we know what, what, what it's going to be not next. Well, I guess it would be next year, right? Yeah. Um, if we go down this road. Okay. I have to say something. I apologize. <laughs> okay. The difference being is we're not keeping up with what we have today in the county. And I, I agree with what you can't just do it as a mile thing because it's not a contractor coming in and bid it. You're, you're talking about it, it may require another grader, and there's one time costs that it's not. I don't think you can extrapolate it quite like that on a per mile basis. I, I really don't. And as, as much as I, I'd like to think that was easy and it probably is cheaper if we have a grader there, but that grader being there and then we also, once it gets classified a certain class of road, then we go more than 12 times based on the rain and other things. There's, there's a lot more to it than a set but with their, uh, their, contract. But their van values, I think, are going to go up and there'll be a benefit there as well. I mean, I do agree that, that paving eventually is a good idea, but... <laughs> the good no. news is you have the homestead protection. Okay. <laughs> May I say okay. one last word? Then we need to move this. Okay. And I want to well, say one last word. No, one problem. last word is property values don't go up unless people start buying and selling. Right. So a lot of times people go, well, I don't want to pay road because this doesn't work that way. So let's not there. Homestead protection. Okay. okay. Mr. Sugg, so, do you have a comment for we? Just one last comment for uh, Mike and his team uh, is that when we start looking at these, these scenarios where, especially if you're going to look at St. John's Harbor as, as a uh, – as a potential uh, candidate for this. We also need to look at the repercussions we're gonna have for drainage issues and things like that. Those costs and those, those things need to be figured in as well because we don't need to fix a problem and create a secondary problem at the same time. So we need to look at that as well. It'll be a total project, but okay. And I just wanna make it clear, as, as far as to, to help with 50% on this would be a new, whole new type of project for us if we were to work with a group that yes. wanted to pay yes. if right. the BPP funds are available. Yes. Okay, so make sure quick. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was gonna give that, when I lived off of Buffalo Bluff Road, um, we had one holdout, they wouldn't, we, we owned the roads. <clears throat> one person would not sign over their, their uh, uh, easement, mm -hmm. but um, had we gotten that, the county was offering 50% match and the homeowners had just paid the other half over 15 years. Okay. All right, so we move that forward. So we'll move to item B. And I might just mention that if we take as long as we did on the rest of these as we did this one, that we'll have to break for the 505 and <laughs> then come back and uh, we'll finish up around 7 o'clock. We can go pretty quick. <laughs> the rest of these should Here's go. There's that nighttime meeting I've always wanted. <laughs> <laughs> you can have it. <laughs> uh, this, this next one is just uh, based on our SCOP scrap and uh, applications. Uh, what we're recommending to the board to to submit yeah. for uh that are due in december um there were four projects and those were our priority orders uh that we <coughs> want to present to you first one was widening resurfacing of uh, 315 uh from from state route 20 to uh, county Road 310. You, you can go down the list but those were our priorities if we were to submit these i think we can submit four um in, in priority order uh to fdot Oh, I got a question on. Okay. on um, Wait a minute, Mr. Commissioner Harris first, Mr. Rawls, and then we'll get you. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail. I've shared with staff some of my conversations recently in my visits to Tallahassee. Um, commissioners, I would, I, I think, item number one and number two, we could, we could easily, and even three and four, we could easily put a. Um, priority letter together for Representative Payne and Senator Perry and see if this funding can't get moved up some. Um, I'm understanding there is additional dollars in Tallahassee for projects of great concern. Naturally, I, I don't travel on three and four, but I do on one and th two, and those roads are falling apart and waiting more and more time. But I've been privy to conversations where money's available. And I think we should, as a board, send a letter to our representative and our senator asking them to see if they can't move these two projects or all th four projects up to get these done to benefit the citizens of our county. 
and I, I don't want to go in more detail than that if you don't mind. Okay. Yep. But this is just the, hey, we, we need to submit uh, applications. I get it. And so okay. uh, we would, if, if you're okay with this in priority okay. order, what we'll do is we'll bring this back in December because we need a resolution uh, to, to go with the, the packages. So uh, unless you wanted to change some of these priorities or have well, them. You've, okay. you've, Commissioner Rawls. You've, you've got Palmetto Bluff Road on there and you, you've got, um, crap. what's that road that we? Millican. Millican, yeah. What's going to be done at that juncture? Well, Millican Road. I mean, this this is just resurfacing, widening that. We have they they would fix the any drainage that was connecting to Millican, but they wouldn't do anything with Millican. It's just this is just uh, resurfacing. Uh, okay. Come out of Bluff Road. Okay. Thank because you. that that's a problem area where where Millican has pro problem at a bluff. Down there. <coughs> but we part of the part of the thing could be fixing the drainage on along. Well, along uh, Palmetto Bluff, but it wouldn't. Okay. I couldn't do anything with Millican Road itself. Well, we'll, we'll be out there next week looking at that. So, okay. All right. okay. Commissioner uh, Adams, Zach. So I guess my question is: is if we're really looking to, is there a limit on the size of the project or something? I mean, why couldn't we call widening and resurfacing of County Road 315 from State Road 20 to County Road 310 to Marion County Line? I mean, 310 to Marion County Line is one one and then we can add a fourth uh, mike mike do you know why we broke them up uh, i can reach out to dot and see if that's an option yeah um, because normally we divide them up um, i think around four million is usually what our max is um, but I've, i haven't seen an application for more than that for for these grant applications okay yeah. just to me that maybe gives us the option to add another one right. given what commissioner harvey's saying that there might be and I, i've heard the same thing actually so that there may be additional money out there this year. And then we also know there's federal money coming. Yeah. 1.4 okay. trillion dollars worth. Thanks. Mr. Harvey. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry for being a little <laughs> uh, aggressive today. I remember doing that the last time. Uh, I do think though, I, I'm a wave in support of all four projects. And I think the board does. I do think though that a letter to our, to our representatives um, asking them to see if they could advance the funding and get these projects moved forward. Uh, while we're doing County Road 315 soon anyway, um, I think that it, with the chairman's signature, I would support that. Okay. All right. So wave and so wave support. We're going to move it forward. Okay. That didn't take long. Did okay. It? Item C. This one is a uh, discussion of just uh, getting rid of the pre-qualification pre requirements for uh, our dirt to pave roads uh, with, the, with the DOT certifications in it. Uh, I know we talked about that last time when the bids came in, but I wanted to bring it back one more time and say, <coughs> you know, when we draw in dirt to pave, um, it's, not, it's not major county roads, it's most of them are, are, are smaller roads. I think we can get away with not putting in the FDOT requirements for, uh, they, they have to have, they don't, they don't have to be pre-certified in no asphalt. They don't have to be pre-certified in drainage or, or any of those. Uh, we will still specify that they meet FDOT requirements as far as the type of asphalt they use and the amount of base they put down and what, you know, what, what it's got to be compacted to. All those uh, specifications for FDOT will be put into the contract, but they don't have to be pre-qualified. So since Commissioner Turner's not here, <laughs> I'll interrupt you and... Do we all agree with this? <laughs> <laughs> well, we got a few more comments. Uh, I was trying. <laughs> Commissioner Harvey. That was pretty good there, Commissioner. Yeah, well, that's I appreciate it. I'm trying to figure out what he said. That. I'm, not, I'm trying to figure out what he said. He said, since the are here, I'll interrupt you. <laughs> no, because no, that's or, what he does or, when he's like, let's just move it forward. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what we're talking about today is a $250,000 per project, correct? Meeting FDOT specs. Correct. I need an answer on what cumulative and not cumulative. And I think that's that's for the only part I'm hung up on. Well, if we waive it completely, you don't, that, that cumulative doesn't even doesn't come, into, come into a play. I'm good with it. 250 okay. doesn't matter. Right. Waive and support. Yeah. Okay. I but thought I we, I thought we already dealt with this. Well, though. we did kind of, but we're doing it again. Yeah. So just so we're <laughs> clear. It, it doesn't matter. I don't care if the specifications are written to FDOT standards or if we have our own standards that we want to follow. 
as long as when you put the, 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 the bid out and the specifications are supposed to be adhered to, somebody can go back and make sure that they, they built it to plans and specs, right? Correct. I'm, I'm not in love with DOT specs and standards. I think there's a lot of opportunities for us to write. And, and when I first got elected, um, your predecessor showed me that we had our own standards. We had our own designs for roads that we follow. Are we, are we away from that now? I've, ne I've never heard that, but I, I'll go, go back and look. But uh. he, uh, he, uh, he showed me, because um, on, on, we were talking about smaller roads, mm -hmm. part of the frustration is people are saying, you come in here on these roads that are barely traveled and you pave them, which you know, I got a phone call the other day from the Pocket Daily News about one over here off of um, Palm Avenue, and the answer was, well, now we don't have to send the road grader down to it. You know, right. Why did you do that little road over there? Um, but that road barely gets used anyway, so you, you, wouldn't, you don't necessarily need to build that to DOT spec to make it last for 15 years. You're, 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 you're right, uh, but that was just the standard they've used but at least since I've been here is the, is the, the, the DOT specs. But. Like we write our own green book is right. what I'm saying. R yeah. yeah. Well, right now this is what we're dealing with. Right. This is what we're dealing with. I'm saying we just. Yeah, the local, the local contractors are going to love this. Yeah. Okay, Julianne, you had a comment? Yes, sir, Chairman. If the board doesn't mind, this particular caveat has been discussed um, at great lengths for probably three years at least. I've been here three and a half. Um, and there's been a wide range of tolerance on the board's um, end. And so I would just ask that we have some sort of formal, more than just a wave and support on this particular item, if we're going to wave it all together so that staff has clear direction on county funded projects. I'll make a motion. Thank you. I'll make a motion that we follow the advice of our uh, staff that we waive the requirement on county owned roads to not require DOT uh, certification for contractors that are performing the work um, with, with, uh, with no limit. Second. Okay, we got a proper motion, a proper second um, for discussion. Ex explain with no limit, explain yeah. So that. before we had a $250,000 limit, but we were, we were, we were saying that um, they could, they, they, if the job was 250,000 or less, then um, they did not have to be DOT qualified. Um, now what we're saying is if we throw out the DOT qualification, it goes out saying that there would be, that there is no limit basically. So if it's a county um, owned uh, road and county maintained, we or, can- Or county funded. County is funded, the, the, yeah. the big, the big, um, we, big. Can, we can put them out there um, w without having to have the DOT qualification and it could be a three or four or $500,000 job. One point to add to that, it would need to be uh, a county-funded project. Now, if it's an FDOT-funded yeah. project, right. the certification is still yeah. Okay. Commissioner Harvey? Uh, Mr. Rawls, I did not hear you include any specifications in your motion. Well, the, the, that's, a, that's, that's a whole different conversation. Yeah. This is just getting the contractors qualified to do the work. Once they get the job, the specifications are written into okay. the... the okay. Okay, I'm if fine they with require that. DOT standards, then I'm, re I'm fine with that as long as we have some standard yeah. in place. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, and DOT certified, can you give me a short explanation of that? Because I remember when we were talking to a company about being, I think, having a DOT certification, it had nothing to do with having the skills to perform the job. Right. It was a it's monetary. It, yeah, it was a monetary deal of a really to prove that you had the. Um, financial backing to be able to correct a mistake and it was uh, an official audit also so is that what we're we're waiving or are we waiving actual qualifications well the, the, yeah that's their fdot has a pre-qualification um, sector out there you know you can be pre-qualified for asphalt you can be pre-qualified for for okay. drainage uh and so and there's probably is some there's probably is a little bit of everything you talked about in there uh um, they, one, they probably got to do the, the job, but they got to have the money backing. They got to do some other stuff in there as well. Uh, so it's not just, hey, can they can they do the job? There's probably some other stuff in there as well. But uh, that's that's what that is. Uh, and not um, some of the larger companies are pre-certified through uh, FDOT, uh, but some of them are. Some of the smaller ones are not, and some of the smaller ones can do the exact same good job as, as the larger ones. They just don't have. They didn't pay the money to uh, FDOT to get that pre-certification. 
Okay, and you feel comfortable with this? Yeah. Okay. All right. We've got a proper motion. We've got a proper second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, and okay, saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. Item D. Next one is the HMGP grant project recommendations. And Mike, if you don't mind taking over this one, because this has to do with a local mitigation strategy as well uh, that, that he sits on uh, the board with a different project. So go ahead, Mike. Which Mike? Mike Rodriguez. That's what I thought you meant. <laughs> I thought you meant. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, so this one is for the FDEM. Uh, they currently released a notice of funding av availability for the HMGP COVID-19 <laughs> um, related projects. There's a 75% match uh, allocated to Putnam County. Um, so they're going to provide $610,258.90 and the county's 25% match would total $203,419.63. Um, so I listed the different activities that are <coughs> eligible for funding and then we provided four project recommendations uh, that we would like to apply for. And so one of them would be for Paradise Point Circle, a retention pond. Um, <clears throat> so from the original plans, when they were going to pave that area, the horse landing area, the plans included a retention pond. Um, recently, the board has decided to <clears throat> add a few of those roads to the dirt to pave list that's coming up, um, but just to pave it. Uh, so the construction of a retention pond in that area we recommend would be a, a good idea just to help with excess runoff. Um, and then the second one would be a generator installation at the Putnam County Boulevard lift station. And the third one would be the strengthening of bridge over Sims Creek. Um, that's one that from our recent bridge inspection reports, uh, that's one that's had some deficiencies that uh, they would like us to correct. And the fourth one would be a Hoover Road culvert uh, hazard mitigation. So. Okay, we ask questions, Commissioner Harvey. Yes, um, Mike Rodriguez on number four. Is that the culvert that we looked at past just north of Lynn Street, where the um, where it blew out when the Hurricane Michael I think came through and blew out Hoover Road and that culvert? Is that the one we're talking about? Yes. Okay, good. I'm good. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Commissioner Rawls. Um, when you're looking at doing a generator project like that for the, uh, the lift station, um, are y'all getting gas, <clears throat> natural gas or diesel generators? Diesel. They've been diesel in the past. I haven't seen one apply for, for natural gas. I haven't either. I'm wondering why. I don't know if we have gas. You do. Do we have gas in that area? Yeah. Natural gas down there? Yeah. Okay. I built the house on Martini Point and it's got natural gas. It run it runs all around there. So I'd encourage you to take advantage of that. It's a lot cleaner, a lot more efficient. And right now you can go up actually Generac is working on a two megawatt, but you can definitely there's one megawatt all over the place. Maybe you get pretty cheap, but Okay. Um yeah, I can I can put that into the application. I I, I know we changed out the one at at, at um at the EOC, and it kind of struck me as odd that we didn't take advantage of that because it's one thing Putnam County does have a lot of is natural gas. Okay, Commissioner Adams, that the none of these were projects we were doing already, right? They're all Sorry, they're what? all new projects, correct? Are they new projects? Yeah, they're all net new. They're not. We're not. We didn't budget for any of these. Or did we no. budget? The, for no, none of these are in our in our okay. in our capital budget or anything. So the, the county match, where are we going to pull those funds from? Would that be from general fund reserve or if we got this all approved? If we are awarded all of these, then yes, that would be where we would pull it because the transportation fund doesn't have the reserves to match that. Um, but until an actual award comes through and we know what type of match is going to be required, we wouldn't allocate any dollars. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Harvey. Mr. Chairman, do you need a motion on this? Would this be a proper thing? To, okay. If it please the board, I'll make a motion that we accept this uh, request from Public Works on the four projects listed in our packet. Okay. I'll second. Got a proper motion by Commissioner Harvey and proper second by Commissioner Rawls. Any further discussion? Okay. Okay. Commissioner so, Adams Act. We still would have the opportunity if these came back and we had something happen between now and then where we didn't have the money in the general fund reserves, we had a hurricane or right. 
something that we c could say no at that time if we had to, correct? Sure, at the time of the funding agreement, correct. you can deny it. Okay, thank you. And may I say, yep. we could we could do one, two, three, whatever the funding, whatever we had available at that point, right? Yes. Yeah, okay, good. So you don't know what funding you'll get, so you, would they fund a certain amount, or I guess would they look at each project, say we're gonna fund one or the other, is that? Your question so the LMS is one pot basically and multiple <coughs> agencies, multiple divisions multiple municipalities have the ability to submit their projects for funding through that LMS pot of funds so there may be emergency services grants they may or be uh, city of Crescent City the town of Wilaka the city of Flacca all of these municipalities and agencies within our Putnam County have the ability to qualify for these this pool of funding. Um, what gets awarded will be uh, up to the projects that score out based on the LMS criteria. Then we would come back to you all um, if they were grants that were secured by any of your Putnam County divisions and seek to determine if the board wanted to accept it and to furnish the match funds or if you wanted to deny it. Okay, any further questions? Okay, all in favor and okay, but saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, move forward. Item E. Okay, we're almost, we're almost done, only two more. This next one is, uh, um, there, there's a particular road, McLean Road down 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 south, that's currently a class two, but it, it it's causing us a lot of issues. Um, there's some there's some drainage issues that are they're causing us to go down there way more often than than a normal class two road. So what we want to do is look at um, as far as public work goes is moving that one to a class one. I know that might uh, might I hope it doesn't set a bad precedence, but it's it's taking a lot of our time down there. Uh, and so what I would like to do is maybe is looking at this moving this to a class one and then potentially getting it paved at, at, at a future date. Uh, we don't typically pave class two roads. So uh, um, this is this is one of those roads. There's not that many of them in the county, but this is one of them that really causes us some heartburn uh, on, on multiple occasions. So uh, I just wanted to bring that to the board and, and then see what you guys thought. Okay, Commissioner Adams, that. So the idea is, because we normally don't pave class two roads, you want it to be a class one road, and that makes it opportunity for you to put on dirt to pave for that commissioner to say, hey, because it helps us and it saves us money to pave it. I would hope that we could find a mechanism that doesn't require all of that. Um, that if you just, if there's a class two road in my district that needs to be paved and it's be one of these one-offs kind of way, I think we have one road we did that you said, hey, I know this doesn't score high, but this is gonna save us because it's the only road out there. I think in Commissioner Rawls just mentioned the same thing. Um, let me know what it is and I'll put it on. I mean, that, I think that's how we need to handle these. I don't think, I think going through this, then we're gonna have a lot of people saying, I want more class, I want my road to be class one because then they know that there's more service that comes with that. I think this is a roundabout way to, to do something that seems awkward to me. Uh, that's the nicest word I can use. Okay, Commissioner Harvey. Yeah, I, I'm with Commissioner Adams, at Mr. Chairman and fellow board members. I, I believe that there's, this is a managerial type decision. And I think if it saves the county and if there's a mechanism in play that we can go ahead and, and do that, I don't know if I need to hear every one of those. I, I think common sense is, is prevailing at this time in our county and I, and I appreciate that. So um, I'm just saying I, I'm, I support what you're trying to do and I want you to find a mechanism to make it easier for you to go forward and improve our county. Okay, Commissioner Rawls. I mean, it Pretty much everything I was going to say has been said, so you're just trying to get to the point where you can pave it. I mean, yeah, this is definitely one that a I'd road. be pushing for. If we did class twos, I'd be trying to get this. I'd have it on there. If you got one class two per year or whatever, I'd, I'd try to have this one on there. So, okay, do we need a motion to move this forward or just? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we change uh, McLean Boulevard to a class one dirt road. You got a proper motion? By Commissioner Harvey. You can, I don't like your process, so I, I, don't, I don't. 
I, I thought you were leaning into second. the process down the road, but let's move forward. I'll second for discussion. No, I guess I just want to understand why okay, we got we a second can't. for We have a second for discussion, so <laughs> Commissioner Adams, that? Well, so we actually cannot put a Class 2 road on the dirt phase. So there's a rule that predisposes us from doing so? You have your own. Class 2 road, the rules are it gets maintained when requested, when, right. when available. Understood. And that's a board rule. It's not, I mean, yeah. it's I see what you're saying. So it's still be a paved <laughs> Class 2 road? Is that, is that if we pay the class again, two road? From, from, from what I understand, the, the, the board years ago said, you know, we only paved class one roads. But we're not the board from years ago. I, I get it, but, no, but that, the that's the. criteria is still there. Right. The is that written Change somewhere? That's criteria. what I'm asking. Is that, is that actually a criteria or is that just something that people did? No, that's been explained to me. That's in written criteria. Okay. So you're, to answer your question, your dilemma is going to be that you're going to have a lot more requests to pave yeah. class two roads if you do it, yep. start making exceptions like yeah. that. Not to mention the fact that class two roads are not genuinely in the same shape as a class one right, road right. to begin with. As long as it's in the writing that we can't do class two road, that, that's what the question I was asking. Yeah. So that's that's fine. I, I just didn't know. Yeah, that was my understanding a long time ago. Is that I'd, I'd like to see that. I was also time. told that we weren't taking any more roads <coughs> into the public work system than we're in. Moving any up, but I understand why this is one of those situations. There, there, there probably are a, just a few more roads out there, and there's not there's not that many that that yeah. I, I that I believe qualify, but I believe this one this one does. Uh, I'm okay. Okay, I don't know. All right, all in favor of saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, now right. he passes. Last one, and this one, uh, this one. We made is. some pretty good time up, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Or you did. We're getting closer. Uh, this one has to do with the, the Drayton Island uh, ferry operator uh, bid that went out and we came back. There was only one, uh, one person that bid on the, on, on the contract. Um, and so what we did is when we put this bid out, we wanted options. Uh, there's, there's basically the base bid plus three other options on there. Um, Mr. Rodriguez went out and then did a, like an informal survey with some of the residents and they would like a little bit more hours or different days, but um, the base bid was the exact same amount of service they're currently receiving. But we also had uh, during the contract bidding processes, what would it cost if, if the ferry operator provided their own insurance for their boat? which is, uh, I'm not sure if you guys are aware, currently the county pays for the insurance and the barge, because we get the, the barge right. together because we get a better price, okay? So right now, uh, you'll, you'll see in this spreadsheet that you know the base bid is um, exactly what the barge ferry operator does to date. Um, and so her, her cost would be $45,260 per year but that includes a twelve thousand five hundred dollars for insurance. Um, if, if she were to carry her own insurance versus us combining the two and getting a better price, uh, currently her contract is twenty five thousand dollars a year. So it, is, it did go up by about seven thousand seven hundred sixty dollars uh, based on last year's prices. But um, option alternate one, alternate two, and alternate three has different different time frames and or different days uh, that the ferry would operate. Uh, and obviously the, the longer she operates or the more different days she operates uh, is gonna cost the county more money. But, but I wanted to bring this in front of the board to say, hey, this is, this is what we have to date. Um, and the contract currently closes December 28th. It's in of December, uh, pretty close to the end of December. Okay, questions, Commissioner Rawls? So, I, I have a lot of heartburn with the whole, this, the whole ferry thing anyways. Um, it's a private island. I can't take my motor home over there and go use anything there because it's all private. Um, I don't feel like any of my tax dollars should go to someone that lives on an island. So, if I didn't say it loud enough, this is an island. I don't live on an island. If I lived on an island, I would have a boat. I wouldn't need a ferry because I would just take a boat. Now, I've got friends that have had houses and have houses on islands and they take boats to their islands. They don't depend on the public to give them transportation. So 
I'm going to vote against this no matter what because I think it's just ridiculous that for how many parcels? 40? Well, I'm not sure. <sighs> if 26, that. I, I thought. I thought. 26? There, it, yeah, I don't think there's that many yeah. over there. And then we're, we're paying 45000 a year, you know, 30000 for 22 hours a week worth of work. That's a big number. And on top of that, they charge to use the ferry. Yes. I don't, I just, I think the thing is wrong. We should be out of the business. Sell the barge, build a parking lot. Let the homeowners park their car, jump in their boat. They don't need cars on the island. They live on an island. So, I don't like the idea. Never have. Commissioner Adams, I, um, I agree with almost all of that. Um, <laughs> the one difference is, is I, I think I don't have a problem with there being a ferry, but I, I, I could see it being like Park Gates, where you have an independent operator that operates a ferry, and they charge the people whatever. You know, maybe she makes her thirty thousand seven hundred sixty dollars by being open <coughs> seven days a week, and charges them fifty dollars per trip or round trip or something, or or sells a pass to each house that's on there for. $5,000 a year or whatever it is and that they get their access that way. So um, I would be all for us putting it out to, to allow an independent person run the ferry, have their own insurance, have their own boat. Maybe we, we rent them our, our barge because we have it, but that, that's, that's where I'd like to see this go eventually. Cause I, and I think that the people out there, I mean, I've talked to some of them, they want more service than even what's written down here. So. The only way they're going to get more services if they pay for it. Okay. Commissioner Harvey? Well, I think it's important to know that it's not just about living on the island. It's also about fire protection and getting equipment across there that needs to, they need to have. Um, my question is, my, maybe Barbara's watching, but have we looked at just in keeping this our, on our liability policy on our own without buying do we have to buy special insurance to protect the county or no uh, and she's got the she, she could break that down for you and what it costs for the barge what it costs for the boat and what they would cost if we were different our, our barge costs would go up because we don't have the boat uh, but there, there 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 is a savings if we did if we did that that's why I wasn't sure what was going to happen with the bid, so we, we put in that what would it cost if she provided her own insurance to the, obviously we're the secondary insurer or however that works because it's our barge that she's towing or pushing or whatever. Okay, let me, so let me get this straight because I think I'm, I missed the conversation. The current bid is, is 25,000, is that what I'm hearing? No. no. The current bid is 45. 32 plus 32 plus 12,000 and who's paying the 12,000 in insurance costs? Cur we are? Currently the, the county is. But why are we paying that when we're self insured? Well, not self insured, but when, why would we pay that when we might could roll it under our policy? And I don't know if we can well, or not. When I say that's 12,000, that's her cost. Ours isn't quite $12,500. It's less than that because we can, we combine the two. We kind of buy the, the boat and the barge. The barge is ours. The boat is hers. But we, we combine the two to get a better price. We don't insure the barge, do we, for damage? We, we insure it, yeah. We have an insurance policy for the barge. And we insure for liability, too? Uh, whatever, whatever. But, and that's a separate policy than what we currently carry with FATP? Mm unless they need specialty coverage, and that's the only reason I'm going down that road, is I've never insured maritime insurance, so unless it needs something different for her license to be able to be used in that capacity, I don't know that. I believe that it does. That might be why we're having this discussion. Yeah. Anyways, I just wanted to provide, you know, th these are, we formally went out for a bid, went out, and uh, only one person came back. Uh, I was hoping to get more bids, but this is this is this is what we got. Um. Well, I, I, I'm going to say this. I I understand the frustration of living on of people living on the island, and I've heard some people in the community say that. But um, I'm not willing to abandon the people that live on the island. So, 
Commissioner Rawls. It's not a matter of abandoning them. If, if a fire broke out at midnight on Friday night, where's the barge, where's the boat? The barge is there, but the boat is there, but the operator is somewhere else. Right. Uh, so I don't, I don't think that, that, that fire and rescue is into it. This, <clears throat> this is nothing pure convenience for a very select group of individuals. Um, they chose to live on an island. I personally think that it's not a matter of abandoning them. We should bring this thing to an end at some point, start having conversations with them, get them prepared to um, provide their own services. Um, you know, it's no different than if somebody takes their Jeep out in the middle of the Ocala National Forest and gets it stuck in the mud. Are, are we responsible for pulling them out? No, I I, they, it's their Jeep, you know, they, they want to go out there and play, but um, you know, they're, they're going to the island obviously on Friday and they're coming back on Mondays because that's only two days that it's operating. These folks work Monday through Friday? If so, how do they get yeah. off the island? So, some of them so, do, a lot of them have <clears> boats and they have, um, you know, they, they rent boat stalls or leave it at somebody's house. Exactly. And also they have cars on the mainland. That's my point. So there are some, <clears> and, and there's quite a few, I'd say over 25 permanent residents out there. Um, there are some that come in for the weekend and then they catch it on a Friday you know, evening and catch it on a Monday morning. They do do that. Um, but we've been providing a service forever. I understand and that. And I think we need to provide some service, but at a point, I'm not in, I'm not in favor of increasing any hours. Mm -hmm. Increasing any hours, it's got to come from some type of MSBU or something like that. But I think we, we need to provide some coverage. That's the only way on and off. I, I, I realize we that. Do, we, we maintain roads. This is their road. We, we, we tell people all the time, we're sorry your culvert blew out. It's on your property. Um, you know, you and I have to f have that conversation next week with that gentleman, but it, we would not, t we, we would tell them there's nothing we can do for you. This is your property. This is that same type of situation where we're taking public dollars to enrich or to help or provide a service for a, a group of people that live on an island. I would like to live on an island. I don't live on an island. And... I just don't think that it's right or fair. And I've had this conversation when, when we were down there three years ago, when this thing, remember we were down there talking about um, uh, the landing and we spent upwards of $4 million to re redo the landings and all that. And I'm, I, I looked at one man and I said, how do I explain to the other 73,000 people that live here that we just spent $4 million for 26 parcels of land? It just, to me, it seems very backwards thinking. Um, should somebody slip and fall off the barge? Should a boat go off the side of it if something like that happened? I, I would imagine we're in a, in a liable position, insurance or not. I think that we would, uh, we would have, have a, a price to pay for that. But I, I just, I don't, I don't I'll, I'll vote against this all day long because it doesn't benefit but a very, very, very minute amount of people in the county. And it's, and, and it's only two days a week. Um, Commissioner Adams, I yes, I guess did you we, have. Yeah, excuse yeah. me, Commissioner Harvey, I turned his line off. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just well, used I, to I this think thing the here. analogy of having a jeep stuck in the in the middle of the Cal National Forest doesn't really hold water in this case because number one, you don't own the land at the Cal National Forest. These people own the land; and they pay taxes on the land, whether they live here full time or not. And this is, I agree with Commissioner Pickens, it's their road. It's how they travel back, back and to. <coughs> It, it, is it hard to have that conversation throughout the county? Yes, it's very hard. But it's, it's no harder than any other conversations we have about roads and transportation and things in that nature. It, it's, it's kind of what we got dealt with and we, we got to find a solution. But abandoning these people on the island, it's not my, my solution for that. And, and until a better one comes along, um, I'm not in, I'm, I'm in favor of trying to help. Commissioner Pickens, may I, if well, I have the floor, can I ask Barbara the question I asked okay. earlier? Barbara, were you watching the meeting? Were you? Okay, so you're up to tune on. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. Are you able to shed some light on the insurance cost for the ferry versus the county's insurance for liability and? Yeah, it's. I heard some mention about us being self-insured, which of course well, we're, we're not, we're not self-insured. Yeah. When you get into watercraft insurance, things like that aren't automatically covered under your regular general liability policy. 
so it forces us to go to a other mode of insurance. Years ago, it was automatically recovered covered with the older barge that was smaller. And I believe Mr. Babbitt used a small boat. And then over the years, things changed and we got a new operator, the insurance company changed. We also weren't able to provide it for the county automatically. So we purchased it elsewhere. Okay. Um, whenever Karen Knubel took it over, this was back several years ago, it was very costly for her to purchase it on her own. So the decision was made just to merge them all together for the sake of economics, and it's been that way ever since. Okay. Thank you. That's shed light on the issue. So what is our cost for the 12,500? No. No, no, our cost. The total is 16,000 something. Do you have those? So the 12,5 is actually yeah, cheaper then. I didn't bring those over here with me, but I do have the breakdown for each coverage that we have that I can send you. So if we did the 12.5, though, that gets rid of the 16, or do we have to we have to do both? Yes, we have to cover okay. Putnam County and the barge, and then the captain needs coverage on her and her boat. So we would still have to have a policy. Gotcha. Does uh, she put in that if she <coughs> insurance? It costs her $12,500. And then the Putnam County's premium would probably change as well. And that's how we wound up with them being merged together. Okay. Now, if I still have the floor, is that based on trips? Is that based on how do they determine the premium? Because it has to be a usage, kind of like general liability. So would it be based on... No. No, it's just the flat coverage no matter what? They base it on the boat, where it's being navigated at. Okay. Um, the size, the value of it. There are probably un other underwriting things they take into consideration, but it's not like a standard general liability, like it's based on your receipts or something like sure. that, no. And no trips. And no so trips. Each, okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Adams, that? <clears throat> so I'll make a different analogy. So... <laughs> We have hundreds of miles of private roads, and on a lot of the private roads, the majority of the private roads, we put our mailboxes at the end of the road, right? We don't even get postal service to our roads. They don't have postal service on the island. Um, there's yeah, a they, reason yeah, for they that. Hmm? They do. Yeah. They, they get mail every day at their house? Not every Not day. at their house. There's a kiosk. Um, right, right, just that, like I have at the end of my road. Right, but they right. do get you right. know, they do have get to mail. go across the ferry. They, to, to somebody takes it over there. How do they do that? I know the ferry on Monday and Friday, but I'm not so sure somebody doesn't come over and get it and take it back. But I'm so not. We, a, we get calls all the time for sure. private roads that say we're, we're impassable. EMS can get there. There's several private roads off of Lake Susan Road that there are times of the year that our ambulances cannot get down the road. We've had to pull our ambulances through to get to people's houses and things like that. So the same, every private road is in that same boat. So if we're going to do this, we should be maintaining every private road. Because we we have way more people on private roads that don't have access to EMS and stuff as conveniently as they'd like as, as this island, and uh, I can't get if I can't get there with something that benefits our environment and other things like that with water and sewer, I definitely can't get there with an island. Um, so that's just my thoughts. Thank you, Mr. Rawls. Well, restate my analogy: your cemetery road in the Ocala National Forest. Still not on. It is our road. It's under dispute, but no, um, it <laughs> yeah. where's um, that? And the Ocala National Forest. Right. No it's our it's it's our it's our road. It's a county road. We just are in, in disagreement with the uh, state as to. I guess when they turned it over, it wasn't to our standards, so we've never maintained it. But it is a county road. Um, but those folks, they would like to have. $100 an hour spent on them. I mean, literally, this comes out to a $100 an hour. Anybody in this room making $100 an hour? Just me? No? So I, I can tell you, that I, I, this is just absurd that we even are, are considering doing this. I think that we should start coming up with an exit strategy instead of renewing this contract. Start looking at, at separating and let the landowners be responsible for what they want to provide themselves. You know, I mean, if somebody called up from 
what's the airport down there um, by Fort Gates? Um, Mount Royal. Yeah, what if, what if they need somebody to go in there and fix their, their landing strip because the moles have eaten it up or something? It's all private. <laughs> exactly. And that's a private road on the other side of that landing. No, so it's not. Huh? No, it's not. From the, where the land, we, we own a tiny bit on the other side of the landing. That's county owned. After that, the road is, we, I, I sat the meeting when the lady was complaining about the trucks going down there from Clay Electric after the storms and how they, we, we, they wanted us to bring Phil over there. Remember that conversation? And we said, look, at the time, I, I said even then, this is a private road. We should not be supplying materials for their private road. Well, we took that road, the main road, and we, we took, took it into the county maintenance system because we had a maintenance map done on it. We do very limited, limited. Um, Correct. Uh, it's when was it's this like a class two. When was this but it's, in? It's, well, it was before I got here. Three years ago. Uh, yeah. Probably three. And, when I um, first got elected, it wasn't ours. Um, Press, or Press, what was his name, the guy before you? Pre Press Tompkins. Tompkins. Yeah. It was Press he Tompkins. Said, he said, the Press said, we only own a little bit beyond the landing, everything else is owned, is privately owned, and there was a uh, an empty lot, and they were, they were talking about digging dirt out of that lot to fill the road. But well, it's a county maintained road to a certain point. We don't maintain any of the roads off of that. Correct. And one of the, one of the, the benefits the for having the ferry landings finally done and the barge being increased in weight capacity was be able to take a grader over there to grade that one road or dump trucks, which we haven't been able to do, but also firefighting equipment, emergency equipment. But that doesn't power, hold water power, because equipment and stuff like that. Six hours a week you can have emergency equipment over there. Well, they currently have, just to let you know, they currently have a fire truck stationed over there. It's, it's the fire and, truck and most over people there. that live on islands pre prepare for that. So. Grant Island in Malabar, they have a, a, a really high dollar golf cart that has a float of pump and fire hose and all that fun stuff. They don't have anything provided by the taxpayers over there. This is provided by the people that live on the island. And they're well-to-do folks, by the way. But, I, you know, six hours, you have the opportunity to get to and from the island for six hours a week, and that's it. The other however many hours you're in the rest of that week, is up to the people that live on the island. I don't know why in the world we're providing service to that. I do believe that uh, Byron, who works for CARE, and that's part of these monies, uh, he lives in Georgetown, and I think he's able to get the boat and take it over, I think. I don't want to be quoted on that for the emergency purposes with her on the way, but I'm not sure. So. Yeah, but if Byron is at the Jacksonville Jaguars football game having a bad day and Tied one on, he, he may not. He, uh, <laughs> he may not be willing to. I'm just saying that it, I can sit here and punch holes in this conversation all day long. I think he likes football yeah. and he doesn't tie. How does on, staff so. feel? How does staff feel about having to how, having to take care of this? You know, mm -hmm. it just it, it benefits so few. It, it's it's ridiculous that we even did that. I'm sure that at some point in time, somebody with influence had a had a house on that island, um, and they were able to convince somebody on this board that they were important enough to be able to provide ferry service. But I think that we should be looking for an exit strategy and um, get away from this rather than maintaining it in, in perpetuity. That's just my two cents. All right, so my, the, the, the numbers for the, the cheapest option, which I guess would be to stay like it is, what, what are we looking at total? $45,260. Um, what I will do is I will. How much of an increase from last year? That was uh, about seven thousand, a little over seven thousand dollar increase. <laughs> that mostly insurance. Part of it would be insurance. Part no, no, that would be. Uh, yeah, it was twenty. I'm sorry, it's twenty thousand because it was uh, twenty five four sixty one was the cost last year, but that was with us paying all the insurance. Twenty five all in or twenty five plus insurance? No, that wasn't including insurance. That was just that was just her ferry service so 36,000 yeah so now we're at $8,000 so increase it's seven eight thousand dollars it's seven eight thousand dollars more right. or as I would say 20 percent I I think we should move this forward to the December 14th meeting uh, don't see where we have an exit strategy and I think we have an obligation so I would agree to that also. <coughs> I'll make a dis I'll vote today, but uh, we have provided this service, and I would say this: if it wasn't in my district, it has no no bearing that it just happens to be my district. 
and I understand that, and the Commissioner Turner was here, he'd probably be saying the same thing. He hears it from some of his constituents. Why are my tax dollars paying for a ferry to this island? I understand that mine paid for it too, but we provided a service that appears that it's probably time to renegotiate with somewhere, and I believe the Islanders should be, you know, present, or, or excuse me, a representative or two, um, if we're going to renegotiate this. But we, I believe, we we have an obligation to to provide this service for that time to where we can come up with some type of different deal, whether leasing the barge out to an operator, getting out of the ferry business, or or whatever, however that looks. But I think. Um, but I would prefer to move this to the 14th meeting uh, for further discussion. What do we need to move it forward? Waive and support. <coughs> so we only have half of us are waiving and support. Is it still going to come back to December? Okay. <coughs> what is the term? <coughs> what is the proposed term of the contract? And it's on December 28th, right? Yeah, I believe it was, it was just 12 months. It was just a year. Okay. Contract. Um, I'll support moving it forward until we can have a, a more robust conversation about this. Um, but uh, I, I don't think part of it needs to be that in 12 months our conversation is not renewing a, 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 at that point because it, Commissioner Isaac's right. That's a private road. It, it only, you know, and we wouldn't do this for anybody else. And I, I, I can't think of Larry's last name. He's the, the gentleman that lives out at Eagle Creek. Remember that piece of road that was at the end? and. We couldn't go over and fix that because the road be between the county maintained road and that end was privately owned and God forbid we cross that and it just, that sticks in my craw, whatever that means. I think we can do that now though. I think Mr. Commando's figured that one out, didn't you? But, On a, you but said what, I, what I'm saying is we, we, we've been telling people all along by what we can't do with private right. roads. And um, okay, so well, we're, we're, we're right back there dealing with that situation. Okay, well the road can is, make, the road, excuse me, the road is, in the county maintenance system, okay? I can guarantee that if you look that up and yeah. make sure it's in the county maintenance system. It, it, is. it is. Okay? So, um, okay, Mr. Adams, Act. It, maybe we, is this potentially something, I mean, MSPUs can be used for about anything, can't they? Mm -hmm. couldn't that, we have, that's, that's what I was couldn't thinking. Couldn't we have the ferry be an MSPU? Right. And we've had that discussion yeah. because I had mentioned, because we've been, We've been dealing with either the road or the ferry service or the ferry landings for now starting my sixth year. We're starting, okay? And some of these things are being taken care of, which is the ferry landings get done, and they should be done in a year. Okay, they said 10 months, so I give them a year. Then we're, we're taking care of their concerns of being able to get firefighting equipment over that. that about 15 years ago, that island caught on fire and stayed on fire for a long time. And um, so we could get the equipment over there um, and then figure well drilling equipment, all the things that they want to have over there for future uh, expansion and construction. Um, but um, I think that, um, you know, if we could push this to next month, we can talk about the MS, having maybe an MS what we're going to do until we can have discussions of what we're going to do with it in the future. But we did discuss an MSVU, especially when they talked about wanting more days of operation. That would have, I, I wouldn't vote for that other than the MSVU or another fee. So. so are we talking about moving it to a workshop or? Let's move it to the workshop on the 14th. I can, I can support that. And I, I like the way this conversation has gone. I think. Well, we got two things. So, sorry to interrupt you. One, her, her contract runs out in December. I mean, I, 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 it's closer to the end of December, but I still think we had need to come up with something does, in December. Does the contract not have an automatic month-by-month -month extension? Uh, yeah, and I'll, no, I guess I'll just going to say I'm not going to I'm not going to speak for, for Karen, but Karen, that, but I don't think she wants a month-to-month because -month we've had to do some month-to-months because this thing has been, for whatever reason, okay, and I blame myself for not saying, hey, when do we renew the, the contract for Drayton Island? Is we've had to do some month and months because it gets to the, the 11th hour and we got to do something okay and, and karen has been a fabulous operator mm -hmm. for us yep. nobody's had to tell her to tie the barge down during a hurricane go change the chains when the 
when the king tide comes in, you got to do all those things. Nobody has ever said Mike might have, y'all might have gotten with her, but she takes care of these things too, so I'm going to defend her. But um, it's, it's time to, you know, to have those discussions. But, um, Julian, do you want to say something? I'm sorry, you're shaking your head over there. So, so I think she would want a, a, a one year contract, maybe a six month. I don't think she wants a month to month. I, I would suggest the, the 12 month. That's what we wanted to bring forward. It was to you guys from December, have this discussion today and bring this forward in December uh, for the 12 month. And then I'd, be, yeah, I'd love to have a discussion uh, following that on, on follow on, on how we want to, how we want to. Exit strategy. Okay. All right. We'll move it to the workshop on the 14th, correct? Uh, the workshop or the consent agenda? We can make a decision. Workshop. They, they we can vote on it. They can, okay. We can vote on. I'd rather okay. do that. Okay. Yeah. And by the way, we've we've given class two roads back before. What was that pig trail that we did? Um, what was it? Well, you weren't here, um, Bill, down there in Pomona Park. Um, something Snake Ridge. Yeah, Snake Hill Road. Snake, yeah. yeah, we just decided okay, so not to maintain. Really? It. <laughs> well, the. That road doesn't compare to the Drayton Island Road. That's, <laughs> That's Drayton right. Island Road is actually. I'm just saying it's that actually we've done a road. It. We've given back a we've given back a road, so it's actually a road. So, okay. Anything else on item F? Okay. Oh. Is that all you got, Mike? Yeah. So we're going to bring it back to a workshop in December, and we're going to vote on. Really it. making a scrimmage. Yeah. Bring on lots of roads. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. That it. That's it. Okay, we'll open it up for public comment on miscellaneous items. Um, don't, don't everybody rush to the podium? Don't we have this? In a minute, he'll do it when he gets oh. there. Okay, seeing none, um, we'll go to um, Rich. You want to discuss the lease options? On yes, the, Mr. Chair, thank you. Or do you want to do commission comments first, or it's up to you all? Let's go ahead and we'll go okay. ahead and have this. So back in June of 2019, we, I'm um, sorry, let me take one more step back. We had a lease with Cimarron, a lease two pieces of property that are being used for nursing homes within the county, providing that public service. That lease is uh, approximately 40 years old. So back in June of 2019, we represented to Cimarron that we were gonna extend that lease. And they came to us this year and asked us for consent to sublet, which they have done periodically. And when they came to us for that request for consent, I started taking a closer look at the original lease and realized that we really did need to update the lease, um, add in some language that is currently required by statute. So there have been some negotiations back and forth to product, which is uh, what I provided to you at the end of the commission meeting. Um, so there's two different properties, one in Crescent City on 100 North Lake Street, and then the other property is here in Palatka on 501 South Palm. So these leases update the um, kind of the conditions, provisions, the expectations to match current Florida law. And they also include um, updated exhibits as exhibit A on the end as to what the rent amounts will be with um, annual increases of 3%. Based upon our prior representation, um, I am asking the board to consider approving these two lease agreements with Cimarron Properties, and I can answer any questions. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the two leases as presented. I'll second, but I have a question. Okay, we've got a proper motion by Commissioner Harbor and a second by Commissioner Rawls. And Commissioner Rawls, you have the floor. Well, under the, under the, um, the sublet, um, paragraph 12, it says that um, uh, without written consent of the lessor, um, so we can give them permission to sublet, but then on um, paragraph two under the permitted use, it, it almost, it, the way I read this, it says Alicia agrees to continuously and at all times use the occupancy, um, use, and, use and occupy the premises during the lease term solely for the permitted as, as a skilled nursing facility. It almost says, sounds to me like if you read that, that it, we're saying that they must continuously um, <coughs> use the property, so I'm just wondering if we shouldn't add in unless agreed upon under the conditions of Article 12. 
So the lessee does actually, even though they don't physically occupy it, they legally occupy it because you want the expectations on if there's mm -hmm. ever a breach but of the you, lease agreement? When you and I talked earlier, you said they're subleasing it. They are. Yeah. yeah. But what I'm saying is in a legal context, you want your lessee to be the person in ownership and they're occupying it even though they're subleasing it. Legally, they're still occupying it because they're the ones the expectations are between them and the county. So if, if there was, say, a, a fire and a loss um, and they, they come in and we, we say, they, they say, well, this was caused by our, our the people that were subleasing, but they weren't, they weren't the one physically leasing. I see what you're saying. You're saying from a terminology perspective, they're leasing it. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it says here that, that they agree to continuously and at all times use and occupy. It, it doesn't say occupy from a distance. It just says use and occupy. So I'm, I didn't, I mean, I'm, I, I'll, if, if, if you're comfortable with this. I'm I'll, comfortable with okay. it. Okay. Okay. When I, when I read through it, I said, you know, okay. you talk about them subleasing it, they're not occupying it. But I, I appreciate the question. <laughs> and that's like for your example, that's why we have right. insurance requirements in there. Okay. And the indemnification requirements. I'm good. Mr. Adams, I, I guess these are used as what are, what are the buildings? Nursing homes. Nursing homes. That's the nursing home on Crescent Home. Lake. Mm -hmm. Home Avenue, Crescent Lake. And then yeah. the one on. So if we compare the, the lease amount to other buildings of similar type, is there is there a reason we would do that? So this works out to $531 a month and $760 a month. You can't rent a one bedroom apartment in Putnam County for 531 or $760 a month. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what is right? $6,370 for 12 months. That's a month. That's yeah. a month. Oh, that's a month. Okay. That's a month. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't, yeah, I'm we're not this. renting that. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. I misread that. Yep. Yeah, that's a. Okay. That's a I was going to say, that, was, that would be insane. I had to look at it twice. It does yeah, say yeah. monthly. So I got well, it. We can make serious money. <laughs> we did discuss that, though, when, yeah. when we renewed this. Yeah. And part of the conversation revolved around the fact they provide a necessary service. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. Well, and, and the lease amounts that you see in this lease are actually greater than the extension we agreed to than what was in that extension. Okay. So and then we the, have adjusted them upward. The increase yearly is 3%? Yes, sir. So that, that's in line with what we're, is happening nationally. Yeah, and they, cool. they pay the upkeep and maintenance, insurance, all that, so net net, I guess. Yes, sir. Perfect. Okay. Any other questions, comments before we vote? I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Let's go for it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Got a proper motion, a proper second. All in favor, any kind of saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Okay. Um, commissioner comments. We'll start with Commissioner Rawls. Um, I have none other than um just enjoy the rest of your week have a happy thanksgiving and i will probably see you at one or two parades in the next week or so yeah. okay commissioner harvey yeah i have one um thank you mr irv shapiro came before us at nine o'clock and submitted a card and then asked me if i would read it at uh two o'clock i mean at our workshop today he lives at 205 south county road 315 in interlochen um it, his concern, Mr. Troxell, was the sidewalk along 315, and you've talked to him before, I've talked to him before. The trash that's along that section of road, because um, he walks that, and we don't, we have a hard time maintaining that, that sidewalk. Um, so I think one day we need to have a discussion of maybe a, uh, a group out there that maybe could take care of that road or maybe enter into a agreement with the town. It is in the town of Interlochen proper, uh, but it was put there by the uh, Obama stimulus money that was shovel ready projects, uh, which is a badly needed sidewalk. I mean, I, it really is. It's a wonderful sidewalk, but, it, but it's hard for us to take our bat wings, get up there next to that fence and mow it. And then if we do, there's trash along that area. So I understand his, his concern, and, and I have actually taken my 
weed eater down there and we eated some of it, but it, it's quite extensive. So he wanted me to read that in the <coughs> record and I've done that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Commissioner Adams Act. Just happy Thanksgiving, everybody, and uh, that's about all I got today. Okay, ditto on that. Hope everybody has a happy Thanksgiving. Um, Administrator Suggs. I have nothing for the workshop, sir. Uh, if we're not, <coughs> not going to have closing comments after the 505, then I'll go ahead and say it now that uh, this has been an outstanding year, you know, uh, working with you five as well as our staff and our county attorney. It's been a uh, very productive year, and uh, I got lots to be thankful for. And uh, just want to make sure that you folks understand how much we do appreciate the service that we provide you five. And uh, thank you so much, and have a happy Thanksgiving. Okay, we thank you, and we thank all the staff. <clears throat> There's no question about that, and all the employees of the county. Okay, if there's no further business to come before the transportation meeting, we stand adjourned. We do have a 505 continuation. Oh, we're going to go <laughs> No. <Sorry. laughs> Okay. Remember, we do have a 505 continuation of our Monday or of our morning meeting. We stand adjourned.